and you're very welcome to the Women's Rugby Pod. It's semi-final week in the World Cup. My name is Johnny Hammond and we are joined well, by the lady of the moment. Uh, she is preparing for a World Cup semi-final against Canada. She's been selected at number eight and with the captain's armband, it is a very, very, very warm welcome to Sarah Hunter. Nice. Nice shiner you've got there, Santa. Are you well outside of that? Yeah, no, all good. I'm not sure how it actually happened. Um, but yeah, got um got one for for the win for the quarterfinal. But yeah, no, all good. Um looking forward to the game at the weekend. It's uh obviously a quick turnaround, six days to get the, the body right and ready to go again. But yeah, no, um it's been a good weekend. Yeah, just looking forward to getting the game going now. Are you talking about that? That's not a quick turn. You used to play in the days when you had two World Cup games in four days. I know, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Um, we were saying that the other day, like the, the girls that have actually done done uh, the four-day turnarounds when some of the young ones were like, oh, six days. We're like, what I do in four days? Um, and they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, we used to, the World Cup would have been over and done with by now. Um it was like done and dusted in three and a bit weeks, something like that. So, um, so yeah, six days is plenty of time. Have you dried out? Yeah, just about. Although the boots were still wet until yesterday, um, but a nice sunny day at training um, managed to to get them dry again. But it was just ridiculous. Like I've never played in rain quite like it. it was biblical, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It's one of those games where you think, I, I really hope people watching can understand just how bad it is. Because, you know, sometimes you watch games on TV and you, you can't. And then, um, so I was like, oh, I really hope uh, that people can see just how bad it was. And then I watched some of the, like, footage back and obviously saw some of the photos. And I was like, oh, wow, it's even worse than I thought it was. Coming up on the pod later, Stacey Fleur, the smiling assassin, wonderful player in that midfield for the Black Friends. She joins us on her birthday, no less. And for the Canadian camp, we've got Emily Totosi, try scoring machine, and the lady who is leading a quite exceptional campaign for Canada, Sophie de Goody, joins us again on the pod. You haven't spoken a, a huge amount because that's you, um, but I actually would just like to have a little chat and I, I'm hugely, hugely appreciative, not just today, but throughout this World Cup of your time because uh, you're a lady in demand, not only with with, uh, with people like myself, uh, but your team uh, and all the rest of it. So on the weekend, you became the uh, most capped women's rugby player of all time. England's most capped player, 138 caps. You've been to 15 Six Nations. Ten titles, five as captain, you're a World Cup winner. Have you had a moment just to reflect? Um yeah, yeah. After the after the game, um and after I got back um to the hotel, I, I just had sort of I guess maybe twenty minutes just to myself. Um like everyone was doing off doing things and yeah, I just try to sort of take it all in. I, I I don't think until I've probably stopped and be able to like fully appreciate it. But yeah, I did manage to have just a moment of reflection about the whole day and just how like incredible it was really. And and in that moment, where where did your mind wander? All over the place, you know, it wandered right back to um like when I first started playing it wanted to uh, all the people that had helped me along the way um to the amazing team that I'm part of to the teams that I've like been lucky enough to to do amazing things with yeah it probably did a whole a whole <laughs> uh, a whole like route of my my journey like and just thinking about all the people that had had helped me along the way and had played like a huge part in in making that that day happen and again she just continues to just bat it away and, and talk about the team and what have you uh not not you know that you slip uh into that thank you very much but there you know, look there's been some really lovely stuff you know all the squad in your t-shirts you won three eight t-shirts 
a little standing ovation. I mean, if if to get Alan Shearer, um, a man who's very important in your part of the world, um, we come from to 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 say that. But not only that, to but, but to be topped by Katie Daly McLean and be in a hot tub. I mean, these are special moments, right? Yeah, honestly. Um, so. Like the, the the squad were amazing. I mean, on shirt presentation, like they did a poem in a like Love Actually style, and which was absolutely amazing. And I guess that and the balloons and just being with them and getting um the win, like and my mom and dad being there, and that would have been. Um, we got back to the hotel like later on, and there was cap presentation. Obviously, Berna, um, with her fiftieth cap, such a special occasion for her, and to share that with with Berna was 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 really really special. And like she got her cap presentation, and then um, like all the friends and family were there to 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 have have that moment as well. And the, and then Jill Burns, Karen Armand, and um, George, Paula George got up and. And presented me with um, this gold cap, and they spoke around like a bit about what red roses mean, and that again, that would have topped it off. Do you know what I mean? That would have been like just the the best thing, you know, to have three legends of the game come and present you on your 138th cap would have been like like enough, like more than enough. And then um, and then Emily Lyles, um, they're like, oh, you've got media to go and do, and I was like, what? Are you serious? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, we just got like a lot going going on that we just need to do. And I just thought, oh brilliant. Well, it's the end of that. We've done everything. Like I can understand why. So off she went, the ultimate professional being like, oh, we've got um, some messages to do for the fans out in New Zealand. We've got some for back home. Took me off to this room. I'm sat there, like she's recording it, like <laughs> and totally, totally bought into it. And then she thought, all right, we're done. We can go in now and like you can go and chat and mingle I walked in and then everyone like friends family players staff were all in these t-shirts and I was just like oh like honestly it was just I, I just couldn't quite believe like the efforts that they'd they'd gone to well, I can now because they're just a brilliant bunch of girls that they they would would do something like that and um yeah I then thought it's like oh you've got these t-shirts done quite quickly not thinking that they would have had it all prepped um, and then they they sat me down at the front and and put these videos on and like I was like Alan Shearer like that's mental like growing up in Newcastle as a kid the amount of times I've gone and watched him play and then for him to be saying my name was just like uh, mind blowing and then yeah Katie Daly in the hot tub I was like oh maybe retirement isn't so bad after all if that happened so yeah it was just like above and beyond what I could ever ever imagine you know they they made the day so special um and you know having past players past coaches like family members like they sporting legends yeah they just absolutely like knocked it out of the park I was yeah I thought it was all right I thought I was going to hold it together and then I just lost it at the end it was just yeah it meant it meant so much so much to me and I can't thank them enough for for putting it together. And they'd been plotting for a little while, apparently, been having secret meetings and poem club and practice. And um, I was oblivious to it all. Had no idea it was going on. They 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 did well. They did well, very well. How lovely! How, tell us more about the the the, the, the poem, the Lovatsi style kind of poem. Just give us a description of that. Yeah. So, um, sort of. Each player and this couple of staff members had a had a line each just talking about me as a person and um as a player, but it, it had a lot of humour in as well about the fact that I like can't dance and you know uh the fact that I always really say can. fantastic in my in my speeches, making everyone drink because they play drinking games when I go up and have to make a speech. So yeah, it was just it just had a lovely blend of like <laughs> you know like real thoughtfulness in but with like an element of humor to it which yeah it was just yeah I couldn't have asked couldn't ask for more really it was um it was very good oh how brilliant how how very 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 special uh for a very special person but but the person of course who who made uh you know your 138 cap the best 
was was you yourself, of course, because you had a blinder. Uh, and I know out of all the bits and pieces, that would have pleased you the most that day. Yeah, I mean, it's very kind of you say, but I don't know, like, I mean, I think I think the weather helped. Um, I just, as soon as it started um, raining and I, we went out to warm up and I heard, um, I think one of the Aussies sort of say, oh, this isn't really the weather for us, is it? And I was like, brilliant, this is it. Like, I was like, I love playing in the rain. Like, do you know what? Like, play some of my best games in the rain. And I just, I just, obviously the occasion of it, I just wanted to go out and enjoy it. And I think when you sort of have, sort of, you've got two options when you have sort of face weather as bad as that, you can sort of, like moan about it and you can feel sorry for yourself that we're gonna have to play in that or you can really embrace it and just get fully stuck in and yeah um I just thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed um running around splashing around in the puddles and getting soaking wet like after all you've got to remember I am from the northeast I probably spent most of my uh childhood playing week in week out in conditions like that yeah I mean there's 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 playing in rain in the northeast and there's needing a wetsuit to play the game of rugby, uh, which is what it, kind of what it was like. No, we'll, we'll get into the rugby in, in a sec, but I'm, I'm still going to quite let you off the, the hook because um, you're just talking about stuff and things you've done <laughs> and not you. Um, your consistency and quality, you've been instrumental in every part of England's success um, since that wobbly time in 2015 or, or, or there, there or thereabouts. Uh, your performance on the field has always been key to to you. Um, the adulation and outpouring of not only your teammates but but people around the world um, has 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 been quite exceptional. Um, you the are you are the epitome uh, of a red rose. These are all just just quotes and things that I've picked up over the, over the last few days, and I have absolutely no issue in slightest in saying that I had a little wet eye. Um, when you came off and you, you you cheered, but way beyond that, and way far far more important than any, any suffering in a rugby boot is is that you're always there for people, Santa, uh, and your teammates, um, and your parents are always there for 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 you as well. I just wanted to wonder if you wanted to just have a moment, just to just to possibly just just off the cap to to, to mum and dad. Oh yeah, like I'd probably make them cry again. I think they both shed a tear, like. Cause... The, the girls made me stand up once I'd composed myself and stopped crying um, just to say a few words. And like genuinely, I would not be talking to you here about 138 caps if it wasn't if it wasn't for them. You know, we're talking back in the early 90s about um, like a, a little girl going home and telling her parents she played rugby and that that wasn't the norm it wasn't the done thing and they could have easily said oh do you know what like rugby isn't really a sport for girls you know you like why don't you try like why don't you keep playing netball or something more like what was seen then as uh, a girl's girl sport to go and do whereas my mum mum and dad just accepted it they were like oh brilliant like something you love um and like from day one like supported me with everything you know they they came down to to Wembley to watch me in that curtain raiser, like probably for all of about ten minutes. But like from from day one, they've been like my absolute biggest supporters. Um, they they've washed kit, they've bought kit, they've taken me to training, they've followed me around the world. They've been there at like the absolute highs and the like the absolute lows. They they picked me up and they've like kept me going you know they showed me unconditional love and support and um like they haven't just made me the the the, the player that I am they've they've shaped and guided me as the, the person and like yeah I'm like forever grateful for having in my eyes the two best parents I could ever ever have asked for and yeah I'm just it made it made Saturday Sunday even more special that they they were out there and they'd adapt their flag to one three eight not out and yeah they're just they're just two amazing human beings that like I love so much and uh, supported me and will continue to support me in, in everything in everything I do as well. It's 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 amazing when when, when you see them and we we saw them on the on the on the television on, on Sunday that their pride because they realise far more than you do. 
that you you're a, a, a British sporting treasure, um, and you and you're still there living it, and doing it at the very highest level, and and again, that's the most important thing to you. Um, we will move on, Sonja, but just to say, um, it's been an absolute privilege in in talking about you and, and to you over the years. Um, Far, far beyond the, the rugby player you are, but the, the, the person you are. And an, an example to, to every young girl, boy uh, out there picking up a rugby ball um, and, and those of my, my age and, and well beyond, um, congratulations. You deserve absolutely everything that, that's coming your way at the moment and beyond. Um, let's get to some rugby. Yeah, thanks, Johnny. <laughs> just, just please. Don't want to talk about me anymore. Uh, <laughs> look, we're, we're just kind of... Look back, I mean, you know, we, we, we're kind of uh, Wednesday night here in the UK, your Thursday morning there. So kind of the England-Canada kind of result is, is at, uh, the uh, England-Australia result, sorry, is, is kind of done. I guess conditions have, have dictated large parts of the, the game plan. Um, but let's let, let's spring forward to the semi-final against Canada, of course. Your selection has just, just dropped. Hannah Bottomley comes in for Vicky Cornbra. Uh, Claudia McDonald comes onto the wing. Uh, Lydia Thompson drops out of the 23 altogether. Talk us through those, or which is obviously not your selection, but um, your, your thoughts in 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 and why the, the, those selections have happened. Um, I think first and foremost, we've got a squad of 32 players out of here, and you could you could pick any one of them to come in and do like an amazing job. So I think they're probably just looking at, um how to, to maybe just mix things up a little bit, you know, the the dynamism that, that box brings. Um like Cormus played really well throughout the tournament. So I guess just giving her a shot to to start and see what sort of different dynamic that brings. And yeah, Cormor will come in, come off the, the bench and, and finish it. So you've got two extremely good good loose heads um um for to select from, so, I mean, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't like to be the coach this, this week and some of the decisions. So, yeah, I'm sure it's just about mixing it up rather than, because, yeah, Vic, like I say, has been playing brilliantly throughout the throughout the tournament. So maybe just something different to, to start with. Um, and then, yeah, Claude obviously had, what, two really great games um, on the on the wing, standout games, and then she picked up that that niggle. So she's, she's now back ready to, to come in. Um, and again, it just shows you the strength and depth that someone like Lydia, who's a world class player, doesn't make the twenty three. But then you, I guess, you have to think of the combinations on the bench and what what people can play and what you might need in in the game. So I think that probably plays into 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 that. Um, so yeah, it's just crazy to to think about the the players that aren't even in the match day twenty three and. We're so lucky to have such strength and depth across our, our squad, and you know, whichever team selected is is going to go out and 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 face the opposition that we we've got on Saturday. So, um, so yeah, it's an exciting squad, and yeah, can't wait to sort of get it all going now. I'm sure, and I know, yeah, I totally get Claudia. You know, wingers often likened to strikers, aren't they? They're in a rich frame of form. Uh, Claudia is certainly in that. She's come back from an injury, outstanding in the warm games. And uh, since she's been out there, niggle, so she comes back in. I, I, I get that. The bench configuration, really pleased to see Relly, Rosie Gallagher still back there. But with the, the front row, Canada you know, do have a strong pack. Um, a lot of those guys would have started most of the games. Uh, you would, our uh, perception would be that Vicky Cormer, would, those, those nuts and bolts are slightly tighter, maybe through experience, whatever. In, in those set piece areas, as you say, bottom is, uh, Hannah bottom is more sort of dynamic. That that really interests me. That is there a sort of like a club thing that bottom is, you know, has got the best of Billy Menin once in a while, or is there some little thing like that going on? By well, your rice right, smile, I'm guessing not. I don't. Know. I just, I mean, the coaches may well have had those conversations. That's um, two rows in front of you. Don't get involved, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what goes in at the front. You know, although I did make it one row further up on on Sunday against Australia. I had to have my stint in the second row when so he went off. Uh, oh yes. Bit. Um, but no, like Bots is a great scrummager. Um, she's obviously faced. Delika Menin on several occasions, as has Vic Cornborough. So yeah, yeah. I think, um, yeah, just just 
something different for for this game really. And what have you made of Canada? Yeah, I mean, no surprises from me at all. Like people are saying, they're sort of the team that are are going under the radar, but they've done exactly what I expected them to do in this tournament. You know, they're 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 a great side, and um, I guess now that they spent a lot more time together, that they they're getting. They're getting better. We've got a lot of their players that play in the Premier 15, so we know a lot about them and they're consistent players week in, week out when um for, for their club. So uh, they've got a strong a strong set piece that they've been going to, but they don't seem to to um have it, I don't know, thought that they're one dimensional with the way they, they're playing, um, like we have from some people. But uh, they've got some some great, great outside backs as well. Uh, so, yeah, it'll it'll be really interesting to see how they they want to to play against us. That they're, they're very they're very physical. They're very athletic. Uh, so you, we know the challenge that is gonna gonna like face us. So hopefully we'll we've got the game plan to to do what we need to do to get into that final. Let's get inside the Canadian camp now. Sophie de Goody, the captain, and the try scoring hooker Emily Totosi, join us now on the WRP. I'm Donna Kennedy, and you're listening to the Women's Rugby Pod. Absolutely delighted to be joined by Sophie Taguri and Emily Totosi. Uh, how are we, ladies? Thank you so much for joining us. Semi-final week. Can you, you feel the excitement levels peaking? Yeah, for sure. I think um, it's been a build up for us like week on week. You get a bit closer to the goal and you get a little bit more excitement. And I actually feel I was just we were just talking before this, like a weird calmness this week of like, OK, we're kind of where we knew we could be. And now it's just time for us to perform like we've put in all the hours and preparation. And I feel in, like we're in a really confident place. Yeah, Couldn't agree more. Uh, Emily, I was just going to check, check if you're OK, because. You didn't score a try in the quarterfinals, so I was just going to check that if you're okay. <laughs> yeah, no, all good here, um, especially when we're in knockout rounds. It doesn't matter whose name's on the dotting the balls down. It wasn't mine last week, but uh, we're where we want to be, and I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get her yeah. one. Yeah. Make up for it. You get a couple of the weekend. Look, it, it, it's it's going to be a Titanic battle, isn't it, uh, up front? Um, does it help? Or hinder the fact that you know so many of those players from from both of you and your and your time in the uh, in the Premier Fifteens. Yeah, I think it's well. It's helpful. We know the players, and we know well a lot of them how they play, whether we've played with or against them. Um, but I think ultimately, like we still need to focus on what we can do um, as a pack and as a team this week. Yeah, I think it goes both ways too. Like we've been uh, had the opportunity to play against a lot of them and. In doing so, they've been able to play against a few of us that have been in the Premier 15s and um, really grateful that we've had the opportunity to develop in that domestic league over there. And uh, hopefully, like, once we all come together within our respective nations, we can put up a good challenge. What do you take from, from that quarterfinal victory over over your nearest and dearest? And I, you know, I felt call, calling the game that yeah, there, there wasn't a huge amount of challenge in, in terms of the result with you guys. What what are you taking from that game that you got right that you need to get right against England in the semi final? I think um, our game management and decision making was quite strong in that game, and you know, like it's something we've been working on getting better with each game is the execution of those decisions. Um, but I thought that uh, we made the right calls a lot in terms of which direction we were going to be playing, like whether we played with the flow or, or come back blind. And I think um, our kicking game, uh, like we, it maybe was a the U.S. was putting us under some pressure to start the game, but then I think we got a hold of it. And then once we started to build a bit of a lead, I think we managed it pretty well to finish out the game. So um, yeah, some a few things there, like that we can hopefully continue to build on this weekend. Anything yeah I think physicality definitely especially in those slippery conditions was increased and our scrum also had a better day at the office than the week prior against them so hopefully we'll take that forward into this weekend as well yeah England changed up uh no Vicky Cornbury Hannah Bottomans come in um are you surprised at that change from England 
Not my front row partner. Yeah. Um, no, I was going to say, yeah, Emily, that's definitely one for you. Yeah. yeah You're several no. rows back, aren't you, Sophie? You yeah, like, don't yeah. get involved in all that <laughs> shenanigans. Maybe surprised a bit just because uh, Vicky has been a player that they've leaned on a lot, but she's on the bench this week. So we no doubt know that she'll be a threat coming from there. And it's no shock that England have depth in those positions to be able to do it. So whether it's managing first half, second half, whole game, um, we know that we have a job to do either way. Water over ducks back. It kind of leads me neatly on to... You know, England have had a, uh, a, 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 a squad. They have ro rotated slightly. You know, one game, uh, what was it? The, uh, the, the South Africa game made, made quite a few changes. Quite a few of your team are, are going to start every single game. Um, where are the energy levels? Is, is that a concern? What have you been doing to, to manage that? I think energy levels in the camp are good. I think... Um... We're really mindful. Thankfully, our staff does a really good job of, well, listening and it goes both ways and then really pushing recovery on us. But I think as a playing group as well, we know that when it's time to be training and performing, we're training and performing. And outside of that, we're finding ways to turn off our minds and our bodies. Yeah. And I think we also have like a group of girls that have been doing an excellent job, like maybe not getting those opportunities and, and still keeping energy levels high within our camp and like they've been the biggest support system for us and like go hard at us in training all the time. And like, we really feel like it's a, a team of one through 32, but you know, we had a lot of people in the build up to this as well that might not even be here right now. So I think, well, there's, there's maybe a few of us that are getting, seeing some more minutes than others. I think it's, it's genuinely like the energy is stemming from everyone within camp. Um, Again, it's almost like you you read read the sort of topics I wanted to to talk about because I was just <laughs> just going to go on to say, I mean, you're doing this without uh, your mind would not to possibly say first choice, but you, you, you two very very experienced or oh, certainly one experienced halfback Miller and Perry, not even in with you. Do you feel things are are, are totally against you? The, the the only amateur side left in the, in, in the competition. Does that? How much does that stoke the fire against this, you know, this white juggernaut, you know, going for their 478th win in a row? You, know, you, <laughs> may as, you may as well give the cup to them. How much is that fueling the fire? Not my words, by the way. <laughs> I was going to say, um, yeah, like it's it, it's hard not to have fuel the fire ready. Like it's a World Cup semifinal, um, but that definitely adds a different layer to it. And um yeah, I think you can probably imagine how we feel when we hear things like that and probably don't need to put it into words, but there's definitely going to be a, a little extra fire behind us this week. And, you know, no one outside of our camp, I don't know that anyone has the same belief in us that we do for this weekend. And so, you know, externally, the pressure's not on us and uh, internally we'll put that pressure on ourselves because we have belief and expectation in the performance that we know we can have. But um, yeah, externally, like, all that stuff that everyone else is saying, <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's all good. Like England has a really formidable team and to be totally fair to them, they've performed very well over 29 games. And so it's going to be a challenge this weekend. Yeah. And just to echo Sophie's point, like, I think if there is anything fueling the fire, it is like, as you mentioned, losing those um, couple key mm -hmm. players and it is everyone that's helped us on our journey, get to this point. Um, we just get to be uh, so lucky as to be the ones that fill that shirt, but there has been, a huge push um, throughout the summer and then even throughout this campaign of everyone, whether they're on the field or not, for us to be in this game and for us to come out um, with a victory in this game. But for those just, just listening on the podcast, not, not on, the, on the YouTube, uh, the, the, the change of the look of both of Emily and Sophie's eyes when I asked that question went from smiling, dancing to real steel. I am very <laughs> glad that we're doing this over Zoom um, because I'm not sure I'd come out alive. Um, yeah, I, I, I can, I can steer, I can see, and I can feel the steel within you. Um, I, yeah, I've utterly uh, admired your, your progression through the tournament and the way you've gone about it. Um, tactically, are you going to change your toilet? Would that, would that just just be silly or do the conditions play a part as well? You know, I, I actually think like England is privileged in that they, they're the number one team. And so they don't have to change their style of play. Like they're good enough that 
they can just do them. And we more are like a chameleon sometimes. <laughs> like we change our style of play depending on who our opposition is at times. If we need to play more unstructured, structured, kicking game, set piece reliant. Um, and so and like against England, they have a strong lineup platform and mall, a strong scrum uh, and a strong kicking game. And so if we can um, match in those areas, then I think it'll allow our, more of our like unstructured play to thrive. Yeah, I agree. I think that, and you're right, conditions will play a part if it's sideways raining again. But last I checked, the weather is supposed to be reasonable. So hopefully yeah, so okay, hope but, yeah. to get moving the ball. Great stuff. Uh, just just a couple more because I, I had quite some of your time and I, I really appreciate you you you, you coming on. Um, some teams have been very hard to get hold of. Uh, I'm not mentioning any names, but uh, no, hugely uh, yeah, you're hugely thankful for you guys coming on. Um, what I was going to ask about was there's some 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 key people in the, in the team, and it's no you know, no surprise that I've asked you two on. But Emily, just 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 have a word about the the, the lady to your right and just how important she is because from the outside she she's all action she's kicking the goal she's driving the bus does she wash the shirts as well yeah yeah uh no sophie is uh is a great leader it's um it's wild to have somebody as young as sophie especially at her first world's cup uh taking hold of our team but she does a great job she is behind the scenes such a student to the game and such a such a quiet um leader but her energy almost at times speaks louder than her words um and I think that's really powerful to have um in a leader too is the calm collective um yeah controlled uh version of Sophie that we all see and then when it is when she is riled up you know that it's through her actions um and the rest of us are gonna follow yeah there's a latin phrase fact and on verba deeds not words Oh, that is, uh, that couldn't be Sophie Moore. And when she does speak, she definitely has all of our attention. Um, she's put in a lot of work and we're very lucky to have her uh, donning the A shirt and uh, with a captain's badge. Yeah, fascinating battle with uh, 138 Kappa Sarah Hunter. Sorry to embarrass you, Sophie. Um, perhaps factor on verba, you could put that on your maple leaf. So I get the opportunity to talk about Emily. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, how is how is the big the big maple leaf? Oh, it's great. It is actually so lovely. Um apparently the leaves all had to get checked one by one at customs, but we caught it in and now it is a staple in the change room and will be from here on out to the rest of the tournament. Fabiola Fortez's mom spent two hours at New Zealand customs border <laughs> trying to get all those maple leaves through. And, and that, that's the kind of commitment we're looking yeah. for behind this team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna gonna need it. What what uh, what little phrase or word have you put on there, Emily? Uh, my word or my phrase actually was "You got this." Sophie, uh, breathe and trust yourself. I love it. Love to breathe. Uh, this is a huge maple leaf made out of real maple leaves from Canada that one of your players, mums, has, has brought over. And then you put into a, a shape of a maple leaf and you're putting messages and what have you. I mentioned it in commentary uh, at the weekend for the UK viewers. So hopefully they will know all about it. Look, one one final question. How much... Uh, oh, no, sorry, two more. How much of a ball was Halloween? You got... Uh, uh, mum and dad came along to Halloween, Sophie. I saw. <laughs> they surprised me. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was funny walking around the corner and hearing Ellie or seeing Ellie and Paige dressed as my mother and father. Uh, and it was good, like they played the characters pretty well. <laughs> um, yeah, and everyone had a good time. Like, uh, uh Julia Shell and Sarah Svoboda did a great job of like putting it on and doing some trivia and games. And yeah, we played some intense games, there were almost a few injuries. <laughs> <laughs> even competitive at Halloween games I absolutely love it Always, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's why you're in a World Cup semi-final uh, uh, Emily just, just just, just, finally let's look at the, the other semi-final it's incredibly tight to call isn't it that one it is I, um, I know that obviously when New Zealand was over uh, in France uh, playing them last that it didn't go their way but I think that uh, that team has changed a lot. So has France. So as you can see, they're really formidable in the pool play. And I think that, A, the atmosphere at Eden Park is going to be unreal. They had a huge crowd at their opening match against Australia. And I can only imagine that 
growing because they're fighting for a spot in the final in their home country, which is awesome. But I think from that match, yeah, I think we expect physicality and I think we expect just a lot of Jouet, France and New Zealand both love moving the ball, um, getting those offloads in and they sometimes do risk it, um, but it often pays off. So I think it'll be really exciting, um, both sides of the ball. Absolutely. Legs, I, I, I'd love to chat to you all night uh, and certainly could. Uh, utterly engaging. Huge, huge congratulations on getting to the World Cup semi-final. I know you want to go further and you've got another two two games as far as you're concerned to, to play, I'm sure. Look, but win, lose or draw on the weekend, you can be incredibly, incredibly proud uh, of how you conduct yourselves on and off the field. It's been a, a real treasure to to sort of talk about and broadcast about. So uh, thank you so much yet again for your time and all the very, very best of luck. Uh, thank you thank for you. having us. Appreciate it. I'm Sarah Hedonate, and you're listening to the Women's Rugby Pod. Some people are criticising a one-dimensional England side. I didn't want to go there because I, I, I just don't think it's relevant. But um, England 2001, 2002 men's team were playing rugby from a different planet. 2003, they stumbled their way through a World Cup. Nobody, you know, they almost lost to Wales in the quarterfinal. Nobody, you know, I, I just remember that, but it, it's kind of my job. But nobody remembers that because they lifted a trophy. I, I, I think there's more to come for you, and I don't know what cards you're going to play. Um, I'm hugely excited to see what, what cards you, you, you do play. But you've got super strength. You, you play to your super strength, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, you look at what the Black Ferns are doing, and they're scoring tries with their outside backs, but nobody calls them one dimensional. Um so I um so it's just it's just one of those things that I guess it's something to write about. it's a strength of us. It's not the only strength of us. We've got plenty of strengths. We we play and adapt to what we need to do in the game that we have and we're very confident with with everything else that we've got. You know, you look at our back three and how they score tries and how they score tries against South Africa, how we score tries in Fiji in that second half, you know. Um it's not all about it's not all about more tries and forward scoring, that's for sure. No, and the the, the level of control you've had throughout the entire tournament. Um there's not one game for one minute um that that, that I've thought and I yeah I've had a couple of chats with with mids over text or whatever, Tom Middleton, uh your coach. Yeah, you know, and you, you felt very, very in control of, of, of the game and therefore the results in, in every single game. And I, I I think that'll probably continue over the weekend. Um but who knows beyond that? What about you you spoke about New Zealand um their back line. It is quite astonishing what they've done in twelve months. Yeah, it is, but they're not the team they were twelve months ago. If you look at it on paper, like it's it's a very different team um, to to what it was when they came over to to England and then France to play in the autumn. Like not only that, they've got have they got different players, but they've got a different staff. So it's almost like it's incomparable in, in, in my eyes. And we always knew that giving them a year, they were going to be very different to to the team that suffered those four defeats. Um, and they've shown that in the, this world this World Cup in actually like how they've progressed and how they've got better um I, I don't think for for those that know don't come as any surprise you know you look at the amount of like world champions they've got in their team the amount of olympians they've got who have won olympic gold um so so it's it, it, it it's it doesn't come as any surprises that they've they've got better and they're performing completely differently to how they did in that that autumn I, I no, I, I I don't disagree. Um, and when you put, when you plug in, Portia Woodman, uh, I know we literally went early to the 15s, but Stacey Fleur, Sarah Hirani, um, not only culturally but as people, you know, they're they're absolute winners. Um, and the quality of their their players exceptional. The amount of tennis is is, is controlled things brilliantly. They they have been absolutely lethal. Um, you know, I've commentated on quite a few of their games and. When they're allowed to do that, they, they they are exceptionally good. But that's the point for, for me, is that they've been allowed that time and space to do that. Um, and does that you know, sort of just say, yep, Johnny, yep, you, you, you're kind of right there because uh, we got our super strength and stuff. No, they have done. And it'll be really interesting when they go up against France this semi-final to see maybe when a team puts them under more pressure than what they've had so far. Are, 
how um how they how they play then so that that for me this is going to be i think it'll be a great game um of rugby especially I, you want semi finals to be to be like big games of, of tournaments and, and I've got no doubt this game will be and it's, it's it's really exciting you've got a New Zealand team that have been lethal that have played this like brand of rugby that like you say when they've allowed to is just cut through teams whereas France have like got like probably one of the best defences in 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 the um competition out here and when those two come up against each other um what the what the result is and like do New Zealand have different ways to 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 go to if if they're put under pressure? Like I'm, I've got no doubt France will, and can France cope with what they've got? So yeah, it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a great game. You've got two great teams, like one in that spot in in that final. So yeah, it'll be it'll be a great game. Let's get into that Black Ferns cap now. Then here's Stacey Flula. Absolutely delighted to have Stacey Fluler on the pod, friend of the pod. I think we can we can go there on what is a very special day for us. Yesterday was a slightly more special day for you. It was your birthday. Many happy returns. How is it now? You've turned twenty one. <laughs> oh, you know, feeling as young as ever, Johnny. Been in this team for quite a while, so it's still good to to feel like I'm twenty one. <laughs> Great stuff. Um, you've been doing a load of media. You've got some people on the ground there, you know, saying it's you know the, the, just a real, real buzz around the, the tournament itself, uh, especially when you guys are still out of the park. How wicked is it to be at a home World Cup now in a semi final? Oh, it's so amazing. Um, I've talked about it all week, and you know, I love the the support we've been given, the crowds. It's I don't know, I haven't had to explain the feeling, but you know, you walk out uh, before you sing the national anthem and I always just kind of have a little little browse around and, and see how many people are there to support all my rugby. And, and that's my favourite thing about it. We've, we've talked about growing the game all around the world um, and getting our countries behind us. And, and we've had exactly that, Johnny. That feeling at Eden Park, running out, um, seeing so many poi, cool poi in the crowd, um, that was pretty special. Um, and yeah, just to see the amount of people there that have actually been backing us, who have been behind us, and, and not just supporting the Black Ferns, but obviously every single country around the world. It's awesome to see the different flags um, and the different supporters out there wearing their colours and yeah, ultimately supporting this game. Yeah, well, um, what I love, and I've noticed it for, for quite a time uh, with the women's game, is the is the, the plethora, the, the difference of ages. Mm. Genders, whatever, uh, 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 women's rugby, it just, you know, it, it, it attracts all sorts. And it's been exactly the same there uh, in New Zealand. Um, it, it's great that things are getting behind it. You look like you're having a load of fun as well. Um, and obviously, sort of, we, we, we talked to, to Sarah Hunter quite a bit. She's a sort of co-host here on the, on the pod. They're smiling a lot as well. Now, I know it's in your nature and her nature. Uh, there's all these stats that they, they've done, isn't there? Tackles and and clean breaks or whatever. Actually, I'd like to do a stat of a, a smile off between you and Sarah Hunter. Um, I think Ruby too would probably get to the semi-finals, but I think my finalist would be you and Sarah Hunter. Anyway, you seem to be having great, great fun. How important is that for, for you and the squad? Oh, it's everything. Um, you you know, you wouldn't be here um, enjoying it if, if you didn't want to have fun. And, and that's part of it. Like we've talked about, we've been in camp now seven weeks um, since we last, um, since we played Japan right at the beginning of this campaign. And it's a long time to be around a whole bunch of girls, a big management team, but we've kept it fresh. Um, we've made sure we've, we've had that balance right on and off the field. We've had our fun, we've had our laughter, our games and whatnot. Um, but that's that's all part of the journey. And that's why I love playing rugby. It's the connections, the relationships you build. Um, on the field, off the field, um, all the memories you gain. So if we weren't here having fun, then I don't think that would be a successful campaign for us. Win or lose, I've had the time of my life the last seven weeks. Um, we obviously were striving to to win, hopefully. Um, France, France first, and then probably come up against that, your smiling Sarah that you're talking about. <laughs> but it's cool. It's so much fun. And like you said, Johnny, it's it's an amazing feeling for us knowing that we are inspiring these um, girls, these boys, younger people, older people, 
and, and that they know who we are. Um, that's that's been our goal is to inspire them to want to become black fins one day, or or not even rugby players, just become better people, better humans, and and yeah, that's pretty successful for us. Speaking about the pod off the field, that that's that's fairly evident if you you follow your social media. You know, I I, I could talk to you all day long. We, we know that. <laughs> um, how much fun is it playing in that back line? <laughs> I mean, it, it you know, it, it is a that is a serious, serious bit of kit. That isn't it, Coxage, Demont, yourself, Fitzpatrick. Uh, yeah, this week uh, you got uh, Ruby and Porsche on the wings. Uh, Rini Holmes at fullback. Just how much fun is it playing in that back line? Oh, it's so special. Um, I feel like we've got that right mix. Um, cool having my seven sisters beside me. Um, it's cool having Kenge there, you know, the veteran of the group and her expertise and knowledge that she brings to the game. And then it's also awesome having Renee and, and Lou who are playing in their first World Cup. So good little mix of, of different players. We all bring something different to the team with, within our own skill set. And I, th I think the one thing for us is it's about not trying to think of being pressured. Um, oh, well, this pressure is always going to be there, but it's privilege pressure, right? Um, you want to go out there and you want to go and express and, and that's one cool thing that I'm, I've loved about our management team is, you know, we've got our structure there for us, but ultimately you want to play what you see. Um, you want to have fun. You want to see the space and you want to run into those holes. So it, it's cool. It's a special feeling and I'm grateful to be in there, um, right in the mix of it, um, in, in that centre position, hopefully work well with my insides and, and set my outsides up and I'll be pretty happy with my role. Yes, you've been uh, silky uh, uh, as normal. Um, you play Wales twice, obviously, um, a, a, and Scotland. It's fairly true to say that you know Northern Hemisphere rugby is a little bit more forward orientated, a little bit more structured. <laughs> How important has it been for you guys ahead of France? And then you already spoken about it uh, potentially against England uh, a week after. Yeah, it's cool just to play different teams. To be honest, um, we don't get many matches down here in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, obviously play in Australia quite a bit um, and I think we probably play quite similar as opposed to like you said the Northern Hemisphere team so playing against Wales in Scotland it's always a tough battle up front with the forwards um, I love being a bat but I love seeing the forwards go head to head in those scrums I have no idea about you know what, what's going on in there but as long as we're getting some good momentum and good go forwards if we get clean ball out the back then I'm pretty happy and stoked with that um, the lineups, I know there's so much that goes into it, obviously so much movement and, and, and many different calls. So, yeah, I take my hat off to the girls um, with the way they play. So, yeah, if, if we can match that set piece, and, and we did it at times against the Welsh and, and the Scotland girls, um, but we definitely need to show a bit more consistency there up front against the French and obviously the English Red Roses uh, because that we know that's their strength and, and everyone knows that. Um, you can see how many tries the stats talk for itself um, with, with how they play their game. Uh, but it's cool. It's exciting. Uh, we know what we need to do. And, yeah, that's all we can, I suppose, focus on. Yeah, absolutely. I incredibly impressed the improvement of the scrum, for example, between the, the two Welsh games. I've been calling mm -hmm. most of your games uh, for British broadcaster back here. And, yeah, the improvement just in a, in a couple of weeks. So, utterly fascinating. I'm going I'm to call the, your, your semi-final against France as well, which yeah, I just can't wait for. Um, what, what are you made of, of France? Incredibly, obviously, incredibly impressive defensive um, 80 minutes uh, against England. Uh, Roman Manager comes back in about the, the only okay. change. Um, what are you made of them so far? Yeah, it's been cool. It's been really cool watching France um, do that. Obviously, that game, that first game against the English girls was uh, real, real awesome to watch in terms of their physicality they did bring on defence. And it was just like this blue wall that was so hard to break. Um, and we've noticed that. We've, we've identified that's definitely a strength of theirs. Um, but we've, we've got some tricks up our sleeves trying to, trying to break that blue wall. Um, so long as we can kind of bring that physicality up front with them, with our forwards and our back line, I think that's going to be key. Um, and, and just probably try and stop their momentum. Um, obviously, Joanne at number 10 there, she's really awesome at steering the ship for the French. Uh, she's got a good kicking game. She's got the skill. She's got the vision. So we could try to stop that. 
um, and stop their fast ones out on the edges and the fullback getting the ball, then, then that's a win for us. Um, it's going to be so tough, and I know it's going to be a close game, but it's going to be fun. And I think it's going to be a great game of women's rugby out there, and, and hopefully the world gets to watch it and tune in and, and see that we can put on a good display of footy. How important is it going to be to control the tempo of the game? Mm. Yeah, we, we know the French love to play with that fast, the, the fast, exciting rugby, quick taps everywhere. They love to kick, but they've got they've got it all really. So for us, it's about definitely trying to continue um, playing our game and keep that tempo with them. But also, you know, you, you, they want they want set piece, um, and, and we know that because, like I said, we yeah, English to French, everyone up in that northern, northern hemisphere love these scrums and lineups. So if we can try and not let them get that. Um, if we can have the ball, first of all, and, and have more possession, that, that's a win-win. Um, and so long as we don't give away too many penalty, penalties, stick to what we know, I think that's definitely going to be key because, yeah, they play fast, but I think we can play faster. Watch the space. I, I, I don't disagree. I, I don't disagree. Hence, uh, hence the question. So, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there. I hugely appreciate your, your time. I know you're busy and, and whizzing around and going from radio interview and whatever, and, and why or not, it's, it's an utterly engaging person to speak to, as ever. All the very, very best against Le Bleu. Uh, and in the final, whether that be the gold or the bronze. But, yeah, most importantly, yeah, enjoy it. Thank you, Johnny. Always nice chatting to you. Appreciate it. Let's have a, a look at France, then. Menage returns. How important is 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 that return, Roman um, Manager uh, back after, yeah, a bump on the head, um, return to protocol and all, all that jazz. Uh, Mayans goes to to the bench. She's been chopping trees down all tournament, all, all career in fact. Um, how important is Manager and her physicality coming back into that, that French side? I think that's the the only change. Yeah, huge huge for them. You know, she's she's one of their key players. She's one of their key go-to players like not only attack but defense as well you know um that she's someone that that France really lean on to to get them into a game and to, to make things happen so um it doesn't surprise me that she's she's back for 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 this semi-final um she'll be she'll be fundamental to to how how well France go for for me so yeah she was as long as she was fit she was always going to be straight back into that team you know France have coughed and spluttered um, yeah, I, I don't think we can underestimate the the, the loss of Lil Sansus, um, very early on in the tournament. Um, but it would be typically France to 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 pull a rabbit out of the hat, wouldn't it? Happened yeah, to, against she... you before. Yeah, I mean, like you say it, but like France are a difficult team to play. Like I don't know how, I don't know what you would, I don't know what the upset would be. You like you could swing it both ways. Yeah, you know? no, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the home team, like the home nation, not making it to a final when it's New Zealand or should, based again, based on the autumns last year when France like comprehensively beat them, would, would that be the upset? But New Zealand aren't, aren't the team now. So I think it's a, it's a really hard one to say, like actually put your hand on, be like what, what would, what the upset would, would be for either side losing. So I just think it's going to be a fascinating game. I genuinely wouldn't like to call it. No, I'm not, I'm not going to push you to call it either. That's, uh, that, that's just not fair. Look, let's just uh, remind the, the ladies and gents the semi final of the Rugby World Cup 2021 playing in 2022. That's the official way you have to say it, as you well know. Uh, England against Canada is half past four on Saturday afternoon local time. That's half past three UK time in the morning. Um, and New Zealand against France is 7.30 local time, 6.30 a.m. here in the UK. Both of those games uh, live on ITV. We won't go into, we'll do the wash-up of the World Cup um, post. But, uh, yeah, I've not over, yeah, been far too many blue seats for me in, in various venues. Um, but I suspect Eden Park will be absolutely rocking. Uh, it's a great place to play, isn't it? Yeah, great. I mean, the 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 opening game of the tournament showed like the atmosphere it can create when when um when it's full, and I, I really hope that um the New Zealanders do do get behind it and do get here. I mean, we can only make so much support up with our friends and family, but do you know what? This, They're making some uh, noise. They are making some noise, but over the last few weeks, 
we've like there's people like at the end of the game come to you and be like I mean we don't know them and be like we've just come out for the tournament like genuine Red Roses fans that have flown across so on Sunday when we were playing Australia like we know where our fan friends and family are there in one place but you've got all these St George's flags dotting up all around the rest of the stadium and you're like wow like this is this is really good um so hopefully they'll be they'll be there um supporting us but yeah I mean you want New Zealand to come out and watch rugby and get behind rugby and I guess if New Zealand are in those games they're, they're going to do it but you'd like to think that they'd, they'd come out and and um just watch watch all of them and create the atmosphere that the two semi-finals really deserve so uh, uh appreciate uh, yeah I said the top and I'll say it again thank you so so much for your time uh, and a little insight there into into your head and uh, the World Cup uh yeah just hugely appreciate your your time on it's such a special week and yeah again huge huge congratulations to you uh, what a super superstar you are oh, too kind Johnny thank you very much and all the very very best for the semi final I would say partial obviously but uh, <laughs> uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll see you on uh, Camp 140. Big thank you to our guests, Emily Totosi and Sophie Degree from a fierce cave at the Stacey Fuller from the Black Turks as well. Huge thanks to Vicky, to Tom. Many happy returns to you, Tom. Enjoy the semi finals.